Hi and welcome back to uh, this video course on biological psychology and in this video, video 3.4, we're going to take a look at Gestalt theory. Now, What is Gestalt theory? Um, visual information is, according to Gestalt theory, is processed based on a few simple uh, principles, Gestalt principles. Now, and this is what is described by Gestalt theory. And uh, Gestalt theory, I think it is uh, both historically and theoretically relevant because it is one of the most influential theories in psychology, I would say. Um, and it still to some degree holds. It still describes quite accurately how we, uh, some aspects of visual processing. Now, it was developed in the early 20th century by a group of uh, psychologists, including Max Wertheimer, Kurt Kafka, and uh, Wolfgang Köhler. Gestalt theory is essentially a set of principles uh, that explain aspects of how we visually perceive the world. So I will just walk you through the, the basic uh, Gestalt principles. You will hear the principles phrased in slightly different ways in different uh, descriptions, but here's the description from, uh, from the OpenStax uh, textbook, which I think is okay. So here we have an important principle, figure ground segmentation. So if you look at this video or video, this picture, I think to me, the dominant percept is that I see two faces that are looking at each other, right? So to me, the dark, uh, the dark areas, the black areas are two faces and the noses are facing each other like this. To me, that's the dominant percept. But I can, and if I see it like that, the faces are to me the foreground and the, the white areas, the background. But I can flip this around, it's a bistable stimulus. I can also focus on the, white, uh, on the white area and I can tell myself, oh, that's actually a vase. And if I do that, the vase becomes the foreground and then the black area becomes the background and, uh, and these, the faces disappear, right? So I can choose, I can have my perception essentially switch between uh, seeing the faces and seeing the, the vase. This is again, I would say, uh, nicely demonstrates the dis distinction between sensation, right? Because the visual input that I sense is the same, but my perception can switch based on whether I choose to see the vase as the foreground or the faces as the foreground. Now, um, and this, ide this, this idea that we automatically parse the world into a foreground and a background is the principle of figure ground segmentation. And I think it makes a lot of sense, right? Clearly, clearly, that's what we are doing now. If you're looking at my face now, for example, obviously you're seeing my face as the foreground and all the little bit of noise that you see in the background, you see that as the background, right? It's too trivial to say because you have automatically made made this segmentation in, in, into a foreground and a background. And actually all, all the Gestalt principles are so simple, which makes them kind of trivial in a way, but still very interesting. Um, here we have the principle of proximity. What the principle of proximity says is that we consider things that are near each other to be part of the same object, right? So if we look at the thing A, then I think you would say, well, that is a grid of six by six is 36 dots. If you look at B, if you're a very autistic person, you might still insist that that's a grid of six by six is 36 dots. But I think most people would be inclined to first perceive it as three vertical bars, right? And why? Well, simply because uh, th these, these dots are closer to each other than these dots, right? So we tend to group this together as one bar, this together as another bar, and this together as another bar, right? Which is not to say that we cannot distinguish also the little circles that make up the bars. It's just that we have a, have a perception of seeing three separate bars here. Um, then we have an, a, a quite related principles, the principle of similarity. So if things are similar, we tend to group them together. So again, here we have a grid. You could say it's a grid of six by six uh, dots, but most people would not say that. The dominant perception here is that we essentially have six objects, right? We have a line that goes like this, line that goes like this, up, up, and up, and up. So we tend to group the dots with the same color together because they are similar. Right? Again, we, of course, we can, we can see that this line of dots is made up of individual dots. That's not a problem. It's just that we, or there is no problem whatsoever. Uh, it's just that we tend to group these six dots together into the, into the percept of a line because they, they have the same color. That's the principle of similarity. Then we have the principle of good continuity. So here, if we see a stimulus like this, then you are very inclined to see this as a line that goes like this, a smooth line, and another line that goes like this, another smooth line. You might also perhaps see it as a cross, right? But no one would see this as one line that goes like this 
another line that goes like this, right? Our perception really resists to that interpretation, even though it's in principle a valid interpretation, right? But we strongly, vastly prefer to see continuous lines. We see, prefer to see continuous shapes. And that's the principle of good continuity, right? Whenever we, we can make sense of all the visual of all the visual information that we sense in such a way that 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 there are continuous lines and smooth shapes then that's what we do we prefer good continuity then we have the principle of closure now that principle simply holds that if we see a stimulus like these two for example this circle right the fact that i'm referring to it as a circle and you understand what i mean already under, illustrates the concept of uh, of closure because this is not a circle it is a collection of individual line segments. But the line segments are, in, are oriented in such a way, it's related to the principle of good continuity, I would say, that we prefer to see this, we kind of fill up, perceptually fill up the missing parts and, uh, and perceive to, prefer to see it as a, as a continuous circle, right? And this, for example, makes perfect sense. Imagine that you are looking through a tree, through a tree at a, at a building that's behind a tree, then the tree would block out little parts of the building, right? It would the, the, the leaves of the tree and the, with the branches of the tree would block out parts of the building. But we, we still perceive the building as being there as a whole, right? So we kind of, through the principle of closure, we kind of fill the gaps that the tree, the branches and the leaves of the tree make in our perception. And the same, the same principle, of course, holds for the rectangle here that we see on the right. All right, so we, whenever our perception can, we automatically fill in the gaps, gaps that we have in our perception. Okay, now with that, let's move on to the, to the next video, video 3.5, and we're going to take a look at a different sense, namely hearing.